Solving linear inequality, inequalities, section 1-6. We'll start with the simple. Anytime you solve an inequality, you are going to graph it. So make sure you do that. So we'll start with just graphing simple inequalities. There's nothing to do here but graph. This just says that x is less than 2. So if we draw a number line and put a couple of numbers on it, 0 should always be on it, and then whatever numbers are your reference numbers. This one's just a less than, so therefore it does not include number 2. So we're going to draw a circle on number 2 and then shade the region less than that. B, x is greater than or equal to negative 1, so there's 0, there's negative 1, there's 1, a um, couple tick marks on either side. It's greater than or equal to, so therefore it includes it, so we're going to put a dot and then shade everything greater than. Okay, compound inequalities. A compound inequality is two simple inequalities joined by an and or an or. Okay, with and inequalities, they write it in this notation, which we also call interval notation. That just means negative 1 is less than x is less than 2. How that means it's an and, it means that x is greater than negative 1 and x is less than 2. Okay. So therefore, x is between those two numbers. With an or, x is either less than or equal to negative 2 or x is greater than 1. Okay. Now when we graph these, now all and inequalities will look like this. Okay. We've got to put 0 on, here's negative 1, here's 2, okay, uh, less than, so it does not include, we're going to draw an open circle, does not include this one, and we shade everything in between. Every single and, it's going to be between two numbers. With every single or, it's going to be on the opposite side of two numbers. Okay, so here is our number line, here is 0, here's negative 2, there's 1. This one, negative 2, x is less than or equal to negative 2, so it's a less than or equal to, we're going to draw a dot and shade less than or equal to, wherever it's less than that. x is greater than 1, there's no or equal to, so it's an open circle, and we're going to shade everything greater than See, we got this open space in the middle, and then everything shaded on either side. That's an or. Every single or will look like that. Here is an and. It's open on the sides, and we've got between two numbers is what is shaded. Okay, properties of inequalities. Well, properties of inequalities, they have the same basic properties of, equal, of equations, or equality, but there's one little difference, okay? When you add and subtract, you add and subtract to both sides. It's all good. Multiply and divide. You can multiply and divide by positive, and everything is okay. Now, remember, if you divide by whatever number you're dividing by or multiplying by is the number that we're talking about here. When you multiply or divide by a negative number, divide by a negative number, the number you're dividing can be negative or not. It doesn't matter. It's what you're dividing by or multiplying by. Okay. You're going to have to flip the inequality symbol, so turn it over. If it was a less than, it becomes a greater than. Okay. So we do this to solve inequalities that are not simple. So here we're going to solve and graph. Okay, we start by subtracting 1 from both sides. That's going to leave us with negative 3x is greater than or equal to negative 15. Now we're going to divide by negative 3. We're dividing by negative 3. Okay. Granted, 
We are dividing a negative number, but that doesn't matter. It's what we're dividing by. So we're going to have an x when we're done here, but we got to flip this sign over. It is greater than or equal to. Now it's going to be less than or equal to. And the answer is 5. When we graph that, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. It's inclusive, meaning it includes the 5, and then everything less than that. Next one. All right, let's see. We've got an X on either side. We can move stuff across the inequality symbol just like we move across an equal sign. Okay, subtract X from both sides. Subtract 3. Okay, the subtraction doesn't do anything to this. Okay, these two cancel. These two cancel. We've got negative 2X is greater than negative 12. We're going to divide by negative 2. That's going to leave us with x is less than 6. Okay, flip the sign. We divided by a negative. Flip that sign over. Graph it. There's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It does not include it. There we go. All right, solving compound inequalities. Let's start with solving an and inequality. We're going to solve and, of course, graph. Every time we solve one of these, we're going to graph it. With an and inequality, it can be written in this notation where I call it short form. Instead of having negative 1 is less than 2x plus 7 and 2x plus 7 is less than... 19, we can actually leave it in this form and solve it. Anything we do to this, we have to do on both sides. Okay, that's the biggest thing we have to remember. So we're going to start by subtracting 7. Okay, we subtract 7 from everywhere. We've got negative 8 is less than 2x is less than 12. Divide everything by 2. Negative 4 is less than x is less than 6. When we graph it, negative 4, 0, 6. Open circles because it does not include it. And it's an and, so we shade everything in between. Solving an OR equation, there is no shortcut for writing ORs, so you always are going to have a rather long one. Okay, it's either this or it's that. Okay, when we solve, we've got two equations or two inequalities to solve. So we're just going to add one to both sides. And that's going to leave us with 3x is less than 0. Divide by 3, x is less than 0. And then we have this side. We're going to subtract 5. 2x is greater than or equal to 6. Divide by 2, x is greater than or equal to 3. Graph it. It's an OR. There's 0. There's 3 x is less than 0, so it does not include it. x is greater than or equal to, so it does include it. There we go. I've just written up an abbreviation on the board. But the entire problem is, and in Illinois, the lowest temperature on record is negative 36 degrees Fahrenheit. That was in January of 1999 in Congerville. While the highest temperature on record is 117 degrees Fahrenheit, and that was on July or in July 1954 in East St. Louis. Write the range of the temperatures as an inequality, then write an inequality given giving the temperature range in degrees Celsius. 
Okay. Well, the range in Fahrenheit, that should be pretty easy. The lowest is negative 36 degrees, less than or equal to. Okay, so this is like how we would write it in interval notation. 117 degrees. So the range in temperatures from the highest lowest on record to the highest on record is negative 36 degrees to 117. Now, when we want to convert it to degrees Celsius, we need to use this conversion. Now, we have already done something where we have solved from Celsius to Fahrenheit and we have played with that formula and it's in your homework. It's probably something we've done another time. I'm going to substitute this F for this expression. So negative 36 degrees is less than or equal to 5 ninths C plus 32 less than or equal to 117. Don't really need the degree symbols right now. Oh. First we're going to start by subtracting 32. Okay, and that's going to be negative 68 is less than or equal to 5 ninths C less than or equal to 117 minus 32, 85. Now multiply by the reciprocal. Same thing as dividing by 5 ninths is to multiply by the reciprocal of 5 ninths. So we're going to multiply by 9 fifths. And that's going to give us negative 122.4 is less than or equal to C is less than or equal to 153. So in degrees Celsius versus degrees Fahrenheit. I want you to do page 44, 7 through 49, the odds. Try to do these at home. Work on it for about 30 minutes or so, but no more than that. What you don't get done, come into class, but give it an honest 30 minutes. In class, I want you to do 52 to 60.